we are now walking in the moat of the David Citadel or the David Tower Museum of today. The name is a little confusing because while it's called the David Tower Museum or some people call it the David Citadel, this fort has nothing to do with King David. When King David was around, this was nothing but an empty field. So how come it's called that way? The first person to build a fort here was no other than King Herod, Herod the Great. The same Herod that built the final form of the Second Temple, Masada, Michvar, Herodian, Caesarea. The same Herod that kills the 300 babies in the New Testament when Jesus is born. Famous guy. So his palace and fort here in Jerusalem was right over here. We are now surrounding it. Only that, of course, the original fort of King Herod was destroyed with time and later on rebuilt again and again and again by many other leaders and rulers that controlled Jerusalem. Today it's a museum for the history of the city and it's really worthwhile to, to visit it. And look at that beautiful staircase that we're going to now walk down. This area was a quarry back then. This is where they took many of the rocks out to build the actual fort. And then they used it for their purposes, of course. And we are now leaving the moat. We're climbing up from the moat all the way up to the walls themselves. The hole that you see right there where I'm pointing used to be a prison during the Ottoman time. It's of course a much more ancient building, but during the Ottoman and British time they used to put people there in prison. You can see that this was made as a safe passage for the soldiers that were walking here and if they needed to look up they had those hatches where they could look down and still be secured by the people that were outside of the city. In 1948 in the War of Independence as the city was split between Israel and Jordan the border was just under this wall 
so the entire east side of the city including the old city was under Jordanian rule and on the other side of the border which is everything that we see over there this was Israel and for 19 years between 1948 and 1967 there were Jordanian soldiers walking up here securing the border from their sides among them were of course snipers as well and in the Israeli side there was always the worry that if you walk in an area that is open and visible by the snipers up here who knows if they might shoot so people were very very cautious in this area and the neighborhoods that are just outside of the old city today were in those years poverty neighborhoods where immigrants that just came to Israel were sent to live in and in those days it was considered very risky so for 19 years being just outside of the old city was the worst place in the city to live in actual poverty neighborhoods and in 1967 as we Israel took over the eastern part of the city then all of a sudden overnight those neighborhoods became the best place in the city to live in right at the city center the places with the best view and the city made sure that the people who lived around here would be evacuated sent to newer neighborhoods in the city and slowly slowly all those old neighborhoods were renovated rebuilt and today most of them are luxury apartments that are owned by people from all over the world and for that reason when you walk there in the nights you can see that it's very very quiet empty and many of the apartments were bought as investments or as a vacation house for a week a year and people in the city like to call them the ghost neighborhoods and on the left side we are now walking near the Armenian quarter so many people wonder how come the Armenians have their own quarter it's a relatively small group in the Armenian quarter there are only around 2,000 people living out of the more than 40,000 people living in the old city so how come they have their own quarter the Armenians became the first group that became Christian as a country 10 years before the Roman Empire even acknowledged Christianity as legal and ever since they have presence in Jerusalem and especially during the Crusader time they managed to solidify their own area and it's theirs ever since so in Jerusalem we have a Jewish quarter, a Christian quarter, a Muslim quarter and an Armenian quarter which is very small and not so welcoming for outsiders being a small group that also had pretty difficult history you usually cannot go into the Armenian institutions there um, you can enter the main church once a week during the Sunday Mass but other than that not really uh, which is under understandable Now get to one of my favorite viewpoints. Look at that. So on the left there, where I'm pointing, there is a neighborhood called Mishkenot Shananim. This was the first neighborhood built outside of the city walls in 1860. There were other structures that were built beforehand, like the American University on Mount Zion. Uh, uh, the house of the consul of England that bought 
and built a house and a farm in the area of Mesharim of today. The Russian compound that they started to build even before, but the first neighborhood built outside of the old city was Mishkenot Shananim, a Jewish neighborhood built by Moshe Montefiore with donation money that was given by a Jewish guy from New Orleans that passed away and gave him his inheritance to do something good with it. Neighborhood on the right, Yamin Moshe with all the red roofs and what is called today a ghost neighborhood that I mentioned and over there the big building is of course the King David, uh, the King David Hotel the most famous of the hotels of Jerusalem because it was the first luxury hotel in the city and until today most uh, world presidents, prime ministers that are coming to visit they will stay there There on the left, in front of us, you can already see the Dormition Abbey on Mount Zion. It's going to be the next video I'm going to make, so stay tuned for that. And we can also see here on the left the Armenian cemetery of Mount Zion and right beyond that, behind that, the Greek Orthodox cemetery of Mount Zion. There are many cemeteries on Mount Zion. Behind that there is also the, uh, the Christian cemetery uh, in which There are many cemeteries on Mount Zion behind the Armenian and the Greek one on the slopes there is also the Protestant cemetery of Mount Zion which is where also Oskar Schindler is buried the one from the Schindler's lists and the big buildings there on the left are all a part of the Armenian compound.
and look at that gorgeous and we can now see in the horizon Mount of Olives with a cemetery that is built on the slopes of it this cemetery is the oldest still active cemetery in the world there are tombs there starting from the first temple period and until today So the Mount of Olives is the oldest still active cemetery in the world with tombs dating back from the first temple period and people are still being buried there today. On the foothills of the Mount of Olives, on the right side you can also see the houses of the village of Silwan. And on the left, we are getting to the seam line between the Armenian quarter and the Jewish quarter. This is where the transition starts. And below us, we can see some antiquity that has to do with a very large church that was built here during the Byzantine era and it was called Nea, the church of the Nea. And here below us we can also see another very famous church right there with the grey roof with a grey dome. This is called St. Peter in Gadicanto, which means St. Peter in the crying of the rooster. It is believed in Catholic tradition that here in this place both Jesus was held and interrogated before the crucifixion and that this is where Peter denies Jesus three times when people are confronting him telling him that he is one of the students of Jesus and right at that moment he hears a rooster crying three times as Jesus predicted that he will deny him before the crying of the rooster in the morning
Yeah, I was like, you were hiding? Yeah, I was like, you had to close your eyes. You covered your eyes. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Pleasure. Okay, one, two, stop. Let's do slowly. Stop, stop, stop. Stop. Okay, stop. Honestly, I don't know where you are. Wow! YouTuber. Got them. <laughs> wow. Is that what you see? What a monster. Wow. If you look straight, you'll see already the dome of the rock and just underneath it, the western wall. Thanks.
Hell, hell. Hell, hell. And we have arrived at the Dung's Gate, which will be the end of this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to support, please subscribe to my channel and tune in for more. Have a beautiful day.